What's up, TBU fans? And of course, welcome to my draft analysis. The Gothenburg Garchomp, or as you guys formerly know me as, of course, the Scandinavian Stoutlands. Now, we are Scandinavian Stoutlands by heart, but uh, this season we're going by the Gothenburg Garchomps. And uh, yeah, I think our draft went really well. If you guys are been following me on Twitter, you know exactly what you're going to see. But for everybody else, I want to give you, of course, my thought process on what's going on. Uh, and what I thought about the overall team once it all was settled and done. Now, before going in here, I never went with a plan going in. I don't do that when I'm drafting. Um, mostly because I don't really want to design a team that I really can't see... Well, to be honest, I can't see being a part of the team. Obviously, one will always design a team that is perfect. And it's very unlikely that come to fruition. And I think having the right mindset, you could go with about a decent team or even a great one while uh, just watching out for the typings to make sure you get every other type you can get so you are as suited as possible for the league ahead. So the only perk we had was to actually draft a Mega before going off. And uh, I had pretty much a week for me to decide what Mega I wanted, and I sell for Mega Sceptile uh, for my first pick, and then I have basically a week to wait to, you know, what do I want to go for Synergize? Should I pick Lando? Should I should I skip Lando and just assign an overarching team? And um, I decided, like I said, Sceptile was the main main thing to do to go with, uh, mostly because I've never seen it in draft format, and I also want to bring something fun for you guys. So yeah, let's talk about Sceptile for a while. So yeah, Septa was really, it, it was a no-brainer. I, I had a few months I was juggling between, one of them being Charizard X actually, which actually was available at that time. Uh, of course, 15 people went to pick their Megas before me, so I knew I had a disadvantage. Uh, but Mega Septal was the clear choice eventually after a long time thinking. It was mostly because it is a mon I've never seen in draft format. I proved previous season that Mega DNG is extremely viable in meta if you know what you're doing and I feel I can do the same for Mega Sceptile. It is extremely fast, 145 base stat, and it has a really really high special attack of 145, like Thunder's T actually. And then it got a decent attack stat together with Sword Stance, 110 base I believe. And that is what Sceptile can do. For my team it's going to be a Revenge Sweeper, um, it's going to be a potential late game sweeper and just a, pretty much a wall breaker, fast one at that. It's not particularly bulky, but it isn't really that weak either. It can take a few punches. It's good of taking resisting hit. It's not a mod that I would consider, you know, complete grass mod. It's it's not as bulky. It's speedier. It hits harder. But for the team I was designing it might as well be able to work because I had a first pick afterwards which means that I could pick a mod that I knew was gonna be very very heavy synergized with Sceptile to make sure that its short ends was not going to be a um, handicap in this draft basically so I decided to pick up probably one of the more controversial mon for at least this season before of course Sun and Moon comes out and that was Volcanion um, Volcanion is, as of right now, pretty untested in the meta and definitely untested in draft format. Now, it is a mod that is very, very spammable with, of course, its stab being one of Steam Eruption. Uh, but outside of that, Volcanion just fits the bill of a mod that fits teams. I really, really struggle with, you know, picking your average bulky uh, war type and then trying to find some offensive fire type. What if you could have pretty much both? And I think that's what Volcano represents. It is somewhat bulky, a bit on the slow side, sadly. But it has a very, very broad physical move pool as its special move pool. 110 in, of course, its attack and 130 in special attack. It's pretty much like Sceptile, actually. It's very, very close. Being, of course, like I said, a bit more wally, definitely slower. But um, I needed some kind of synergy, and of course, deal with my extreme water weakness, I should say, uh, or <laughs> my extreme ice weakness, uh, which comes with Sceptile. And uh, it was an easy fix with Volcanion, because Volcanion can take those hits, and it just, like I said, it's very, very 
spammable in any kind of format. So as of right now, I do believe Volcanion is a very, very strong candidate for being one of the best draftable mons in any league. Uh, but uh, I, have, <laughs> I have to, of course, prove that. But it brings a great offensive pressure to, the, to my team. And uh, the only way to make sure that I can keep doing that is picking mounts to make sure that Septal and Volcanion can break asunder team safely without losing momentum. And uh, the easiest fix was to actually get a pretty darn decent steel type. And the best one available, and honestly the best one I even can think of, freaking Scissor. U-turn? Yes, please. Needed U-turn. Freaking really. Uh, I also have a two... This or at this point, I had two back to back, which meant that I knew exactly what I needed. Uh, but uh, Scissor makes sure that you know if something's gonna take an ice stab, it can it can prove actually work. It can do that, and it has a great offensive pressure. It can set up, which is what I like. It's a bit on a slow side, yes, but we got priority and technician. Uh, so uh, Scissor, easy pick for me. And like I said, U turn, bullet punch are the main perks, but has a really broad move pool. It hurts extremely hard. And uh, yeah, I really, really shouldn't say much more. Scissor does what Scissor does, and for this team, it does a lot. And it, that was, of course, followed by was something I thought was extremely important if you're gonna have a team with, of course, a nasty U turn. And that is to make sure that you can also Volter, so Thunderous. Now, here's the thing though, I should say this Thunderous Eye was on my radar, but it went early. It should go early. It's an extremely dangerous mon. Thunderous Eye solves a lot like it's okay it really is okay i needed something floating to make sure that you know any earthquake will not subtain for of course volcanion and of course volt up short make sure that it isn't too badly hit and of course with extremely high special attack and a pretty darn decent speed it is not only a mon i can rely on it's a mon that just basically works in any kind of environment natural pressure it has setup moves that so makes it even well, more dangerous, and yeah, it just was a no-brainer at that point, so, uh, yeah, Thunder's T, making it back, I mean, Thunder's is always a part of my league team, no matter what form, and after this, of course, I had two back-to-back -back turns again, first one I was going with was Dawn Fan, and I am not a fan of Dawn Fan, I should really say that going at it, but for a team that now has two mods, Weak to, of course, the likes of the rocks. I sure as hell needed a decent spinner. I was thinking hip hop at first, but like I said, spinning came first. And uh, we force as priority the ice shard, which is nice on its own. And Jonathan actually isn't too shabby. Like I said, I don't like it. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that I haven't really tried to use this one before. And at least not in an environment where I think I was okay with it. But with this team synergy that I was actually starting to create, Dawn Fan was looking like a very, very good choice. And with 120 base attack and defense, it's not too shabby. It actually had a good wall. But like my previous season with Empoleon, while it's a pretty darn bulky mon, it is also a mon that lacks recovery. I need to treat it as such. I need to deal with a Dawn Fan like that. And uh, hopefully, I should be able to do just so. Dawnfan also has a very, very broad move pool. It has counter, it has freaking seed bomb of all the things. And uh, it has access to the likes of curse and rock polish. So there are things that Dawnfan can do, and there are things it can do that a lot of crafts that I'm going up against may or may not be able to deal with. I, of course, I won't say it here, but I can just say like this I underestimated Dawnfan's capabilities of movesets. That could prove to be extremely useful against opponent to think this is just a bulky wall because this guy hits hard and you might just not be ready for it and the next one i picked up was frostlass and uh, yeah frostlass huh never used that one ever but you know if i have to say something i needed something else that was ice resisting but that was actually not the reason why i really Really wanted Sneasel, which went extremely early. I was so sure it's gonna get it this round, but it went this round, obviously, but uh, before me. And uh, Frostless was a nat natural choice afterwards because it really, at this point, the only viable ghost I could think of was Gengar and uh, and Chandelure. But being a Volcanion, 
uh, Frostlip was way better. And like I said, I stab freaking please. And of course, Shadow Ball, we got Hex, it learns Will-O-Wisp, it learns Thunder Way, we got Sucker Punch, Eye Shard. It has things that can actually make most teams shiver. And I think in contrast with getting a spinner, I am now dangerous. I now have something that can set up hazards, then that can actually survive in this kind of pressured environment. And Frostless looks like a pretty darn solid bomb. It's at 110 speed which is more than enough for most opponents and of course with the stab in mind while it's not the strongest mon it hurts hard the stab makes sure that it hurts a lot and uh, yeah i'm pretty much looking forward to use frostlass i had no idea how viable a mon such as these can be and frostlass just looks extremely terrifying and uh, and i think most people are like me and are underestimating it and that could be a deadly Deadly mistake. So, back to the next turn pick, and we're of course gonna bring back Baltasar. Freaking Baltasar or Drapion from previous season. I really liked Drapion in draft format, and I really needed a poison type. Drapion fixes that, and of course, since I didn't get Sneasel, I get the dark typing as well, which means we got Stab Pursuit, which means fuck you, everybody. Nah, but. <laughs> <laughs> in all honesty, Drapion is a really, really, really good mon. And together with Frostlass would, of course, be able to set up hazards. So can, of course, Drapion would, of course, like a Toxic Spike. It is very bulky, 110. And uh, it has, what I believe, a pretty darn decent speed tier of 95 base speed. And Drapion just gets things done. A broad move pool can put a lot of pressure. Uh, has a lack of agility, sword stance. You can do a lot of things. And uh, it's just an overall, you know, unconventional mod, which I really like to use myself. Unconventional might be bad, but if you know what you're doing, then Drapion just kicks it out of the park. There are a lot of teams that can struggle with this type of mod, mostly because until you really know it's set, it can do a lot of damage early, because the natural pressure that mod is bringing is to ensure that no mod is safe against it. And like I said, 9 to 5 base speed. You better, you better be ready, because he sure as hell is. The follow pick was a no-brainer. Guard of War. I mean, come on. Uh, I needed a Fairy, I needed a Psychic type, I got Guard of War. I had the same issue in LBA, where I actually used Guard of War for the first time, actually this season. I am so satisfied with Guard of War as a Mon when it comes to the draft format, that I had to take her to uh, TBU2. She has to show her, her worth. And like I said, it is a tremendous mon to use. Both having the stab in like with the Moonblast and Psychic Psy Shock are awesome. A pretty decent speed here. And Healing Wish. It has a big, big special defense. It can take a lot of punishment. And uh, it just works well. Um, very, very impressed and very satisfied with this mon. And um, I, I don't really know much more to say. Gardevoir is just one of those mons that. It might not look as good on paper, but once you let this thing roam, I mean, my god, it just knocks it out of the park. Uh, and it's been so extremely helpful. In um, LBA, it's actually helped me win actually a lot of games due to its kind of niche speed here. And of course, Healing Wish to ensure that whoever Mon can wrap up this game is now at full health and can do just that. Wrap things up. So, yeah. Guard of War, like I said, a very, very easy choice for this kind of team, if anything. And of course, the last pick before the bench picks was, of course, Barbarical. Now, if you guys have followed, of course, the draft uh, live, you knew that I picked Sok at this point, and I only did that because the final type that I was actually kind of aiming for, Terrakia, was picked, and I didn't know what to do, uh, and I needed some wiggle room, I needed to think. And I really, really thought that uh, Bar or Sok was a better option for for the time being, but um, yeah, it, it it obviously was not. And Barbarical is a cool mon. Like I really like Barbarical. It's probably one of the few shell smashers that, after a shell smash, is speedier than any base 80 um, Scarfer, which is something I feel is incredibly important in this kind of format. Uh, plus it's naturally bulky, which means it probably can pull a shell smash without actually losing too much momentum. 
And it also has the likes of Rock Polish, it has Tough Claw, Sniper, Pickpocket. It is a very, very unconventional mod. I've not seen it myself in any kind of league. And I think it's very underrated. And I'm going to prove to people here just why I think it's just so. Like I said, it's extreme broad move pool. He can use its special attack, which is, like I said, also, um, like a, it's a broad freaking move pool. Barbarical can do so much stuff. It's it's a mod that's just famous for shell smashing capabilities. It has rocks, you know, it, it's your standard rock type with an offensive pressure. And what do I do with offensive pressure? I freaking win, everybody. I freaking win with that kind of pressure. So um, the purpose of Barbarical is to bring something that is kind of refreshing for the team. And that is an extreme early pressure. No matter how it comes in, it would always have a presence to it. And that is something that you naturally don't get. That's why we have Barbarical. And for the next mod, I picked actually up Riperior, but I changed that for Heracross. As I said, guys, I needed a better fighting type. Heracross is now back from previous season, or as I call him, Alpha Max, and I should not change that name. Um, I will say this: I picked up Riperior because I needed a rock type. Like I said, uh, I needed, I wanted a fighting uh, or a fighting rock typing, so Drakion going kind of annoying. So I picked up probably one of the more bulky rock types, and I know Rhyperior is not that good. It's easy to prep for, it's it's kind of easy to kill, which means that while I could see an opportunity where I could use it, it isn't as important. Um, Barbarical can solve that issue if it needs to solve that issue, and I get the wiggle room of actually getting a much, much better fighting type. And it was between Machamp, Paulucha, and Heracross. But what Heracross brings is one darn good thing, and that is Stabbed Bug for a fighting type. Stabbed Bug, Psychic got nothing on this guy, and it's very fast, it has Moxie, it has Guts, and it has Swarm, hey! But <laughs> no, but Heracross is just a bit more superior, and uh, it can do a lot of things. Resisted to, of course, Grass hits, resisted fighting hits, which means that that's a bug typing, it can deal with other mods that naturally could get my or get pressure on my team because Heracross can win on it, he can actually revenge on it, they just do that so easy. So Heracross was, a, like I said, a very, very easy choice and I'm glad that Heracross is back on my team. And the last remaining mods I had, I put that on freaking slow bro. Yep. Like, I really had no agenda on freaking slow bro. Slow bro is good, don't, don't get me wrong. It, it's just not my kind of mod. It's I, I, I of course like the offensive pressure. I like speedy offensive pressure, and the slow bro is not that <laughs> at all. But what it is is though it hits hard. It definitely hits hard, and has regenerator, which is awesome because that means that obviously it's a good switching for a lot of situation. And it also makes sure that any kind of ice fire issue that I could be wielding with, of course, having two bug types, and actually three months weak to ice is that Slowbro can come in on those. And I have somewhat of a bit of a weakness thing going with, of course, fighting type. Slowbro can deal with that too. It doesn't really suffer too much. It doesn't really suffer from knockoff either. So, um, in one kind of um, weird way, it's not such a bad deal. It actually isn't. Slowbro might just be one of the dumbest, best choices I made. And the thing was, I did weren't really know more good mods left. I had a lot of points left, and I really, 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 really wanted to distribute them um, all at once because I had an E rank in mind, which I was pretty sure I was gonna get no matter what. And I rather make you guys choose it than I do it myself. And then, of course, going to be Stoutland or Fulf. Hello. Um, anyway, viewers pick was actually something new for the season. We had to pick four mods that we wanted to. Uh, I wanted to have for our team, and then you guys get to vote on it. I picked Absol, Swello, uh, Oma Star actually, and uh, Stoutland. Uh, I had a young Mega over Stoutland for a, or for a few hours, but then realized that I I should, you know, out of fan service, I really should include Stoutland. And just hopefully, like, I wanted Swello, I, I won't really deny that fact. I really, really wanted a fast other hitter. But at the same time, I, I'm not mad by getting Stoutland. Stoutland can do shit even without this ad. 
and I I'm sure I'll find a game for him, no matter what. And to be completely honest, I I'm... It's such a heartwarming feeling knowing that you guys wanted me to <laughs> have Stoutland. I mean, that really, really sets the bar for me. It, it ensures me that you guys know that that this is this is what I do, and it just warms my heart. So from the bottom of our guys, thank you for picking Southland for me. So with all that said, that is actually the complete team. And I'm feeling, like I said, pretty darn satisfied with this. I got every typing, which is something I feel is the most important part. Um, you need to make sure that you have one fairy, you have one electrotype, you have one ground type. I actually got all of them. Due to me getting Stoutland, I even got a freaking normal type, which usually is something that fall a bit behind. So yeah, you know, that's cool. That is probably the first time I actually successfully do that. And I have two psychics, I should say that. I have two bugs. And I have, uh, with Barbarical included, actually free water types. And you would think free water types, that's just awful. And it's not. Because I have two mons that can absorb lightning damage. I have uh, one that is immune to it completely. And then we have, I do believe, five mons resisted to grass hits. It's not a big deal. It might look on it on paper, but really, the switchings are just so broad for this team. And of course, like I said previously, Mega fucking Septa. So cool. I really, really, really want to find a way to use this one properly. I really want to show you guys how to use a mod like that properly. And this is my honest to god, my, my chance here to actually prove you guys that, you know, this is what I do. I might be a competitive battler at heart. But I also want to show you guys, being competitive doesn't necessarily mean picking the best mon. It is making sure that the mons you pick becomes the best. So it's the other way around. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I really like this team. I, I really do. Um, I really hope we do well in TBU, of course. Um, do my opponents there, they also got a good team. But I think my team had the second highest base total. Um, I think Trip barely beats me when it comes to you know, every mod you picked contrast to what base they created. But my team is very balanced. Uh, on average, I have probably low HP. I do believe that was around 70. And then I have probably the highest attack of all, uh, slightly over 100, I believe. And then we got 80 in the rest of the stats, basically. So it's very balanced. Um, and uh, it should be. Uh, it's, it is an aggressive team. With a lot of switchings, a lot of reliable switchings, a, a lot of resisted hits included with this team. And we have a spinner, we have a defogger, we have a cleric. There are so many things this team solves that my previous team that I drafted, of course, previous um, season, couldn't do. So this team is going to be very interesting. And I really, really hope you guys support me in my endeavor of taking back what should have been mine previous season. And that is, of course, the title of. TVU champion. So that's the goal. We're gonna get it. We are good enough to pull that off. And with this team, the other guys really need to have a great season to beat this. So yeah, I mean, that pretty much will wrap up everything. I hope you guys have enjoyed um, my draft analysis. I do realize this video is getting extremely lengthy, and I'm actually quite sorry for that. And it's kind of hard to go into more details without, like I said, kind of drawing out the videos. They're just getting so lengthy. I don't know if you guys want to do other stuff. And you don't want to hear me rambling about what this team could do. You want to see what's happening next, next week when this team actually starts doing stuff. So with all that said, guys, I want to thank everybody for watching. And make sure to check out the other trainers, of course, and their draft analysis video because it will probably be just as interesting. So with all that said, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.